If you have a car with an automatic gearbox, the chances are it has paddle shifters with a full manual mode. If you haven't used them yet, you may be missing out on a ton of fun. So here are my 10 things to get you started using paddle shifters. If you've never driven in manual mode before, a great starting point is to drive the car in auto and watch how it handles the gears. Find a safe and open space to drive your car around, watching when it changes gears. This will also be a great opportunity to then give it a go yourself with the paddles. If you watch here while I'm in Sport Plus, the car is keeping the gears nice and low for higher RPM and tighter throttle response. While here in Comfort Mode, it's keeping the gears higher for a more smooth and relaxed drive. A common mistake people make when driving in manual mode for the first time is misusing the first gear. Nine out of 10 times, second gear is gonna be enough to get you moving at low speeds. Only drop down to first gear if you come to a complete stop and want the fastest lift possible. In fact, something that may surprise you is a Mercedes C-Class in full automatic mode won't even use first gear in comfort mode. It will pull away in second gear to give a much smoother build of power. When using manual mode, I used to find it frustrating when I moved my hands on the steering wheel and I couldn't reach the pedals. But this all changed after I did some track training with a professional racing instructor. Many of us have developed a habit of moving our hands around the steering wheel as we maneuver around. This can sometimes make it difficult to find the paddles to shift. Race car drivers will always keep their hands in the nine and three position. This gives you more control over the car and your hands will always be ready on the paddles. Watch here how my instructor holds the wheels as he takes these sharp bends. As you gain more experience with manual shifting, you'll start to get to know your engine a bit more. One of the most important things is to listen to your engine there's gonna be a point where the sound of your engine sends a signal to shift gears. At first, you'll be watching the rev counter and shifting, but as you get more experienced, I want you to focus on the sound of the engine. As you accelerate, your engine works harder and harder and gets louder. Once you learn to shift by sound, you'll be able to stay fully focused on the road and you'll have so much more fun in manual mode. Let's talk more about using our gears to get around bends. In many cases, third and fourth are gonna be your best gears for tackling fun country roads. Fourth gear will get you around most bends, but if it's a bit tighter and you need more acceleration as you exit the bend, you may opt for third gear. Minor bends can then be taken in higher gears, but in most cases, you're gonna have less control in the higher gears. But it's important not to go too low in the gears as this could compromise traction. Only go really low if it's a sharp bend that you have to go around really slowly. Also be aware of bends at the bottom of hills. You're gonna to want to use a lower gear on the exit so you've got that power to climb the hill. As you master your paddle shifters, you will start to use them to control the speed of the car. This is often referred to as engine braking. When you downshift, you'll notice the car will pull back and slow down. This is particularly useful during a sporty drive when you're approaching a bend. As you downshift, the car will pull back and slow down, giving you more control and power as you exit the bend. Once you get used to using the gears to slow down your car, you can start pairing it with the brake pedal, giving lots more control on the road. Every car is slightly different, but they'll all have a system of telling you when to change gear. In this Mercedes, for example, you'll see down here in the corner next to our gear number is an arrow appearing to tell us when to go up or down a gear. In this particular car too, the whole screen is gonna flash red if we don't shift in time.
Paddle shifters can be a safer option when driving in extreme weather conditions. For example, if you're driving in the snow, it's recommended that you drive in a higher gear. Using manual mode to pull away in second gear and get into the higher gears quicker will give you much more traction in the snow. It's also gonna be really useful in the wet. And when driving in the rain, you might wanna use your paddles to help slow down the car to avoid unnecessarily locking up the brakes. People often ask me, will paddle shifters increase or decrease my fuel economy? Well, to be honest guys, that comes down 100% to how you use them. In its efficiency and comfort modes, your car has been rigorously programmed with shift points to maximize your fuel. So once you start manually shifting, you're gonna lose economy. However, on many sports cars like this AMG here, in Sports Plus mode, the gearbox has been programmed to not change gear till the rev meter hits the red line. Now, you may want to drive Sport Plus all the time, and this could be uneconomical if you're driving 30 miles an hour in, say, a residential estate. But if you're in manual mode, you have full control, so you can maintain the exhaust notes and characteristics of Sport mode, but keep the RPM down at lower speed by shifting up a gear, thus creating a more economic sports mode. My last tip is to have fun. Don't be afraid to try out paddle shifters in your car. They can honestly be so much fun. It's a great way to spice things up if you're getting bored of your car or you just want to feel a bit more connected. So there we have it guys. That's my 10 things you need to know to get you started with paddle shifters. Thanks for watching the video. I popped another video down here that I think you'll enjoy.